dealing with the human body, we have to establish a specific position for the body. We have to understand or we have to assume that the body is in a certain space in the universe, all right? This space, this orientation is called anatomical position. Anatomical position is as followed. The person is standing straight, facing forward, palms facing forward down by their side, feet flat on the floor. This is anatomical position. Unless you're told otherwise, any human body that you're studying, you assume is in that position. This becomes very important as you progress in your studies of anatomy and physiology. For example, the ulna and the radius. The ulna and the radius are two bones found in the forearm. One of them is closer to the body, one of them is further away from the body. But if you turn your arm around, if you turn your forearm around, they reverse. So again, that's why we have anatomical position because we have a commonality, we have a common ground that we say the human body is in, again, unless told otherwise. Now, moving on from there, we have specific directional terms. For example, you might have just heard me say closer to the body and further away from the body. Those aren't cool in the world of anatomy. We don't like those. We have to have special terms because we can't charge the patient $20 to $100 an hour if we say closer to the body, further away from the body. We have to have special terms for these directions. The terms that you need to know, ding, ding, time out, time out, time out, time out, before we begin talking about the terms. This might seem like a trivial matter. You might be asking yourself, why am I listening to this? You're listening to this because this is on exams. And more importantly, more importantly, once your professor talks about the directional terms, they assume that you know these terms. And they will no longer use, in most cases, top, bottom, closer to the body, further away from the body. They will use the proper directional terms. And so what can happen to you as a student is if you don't have these terms down, you will be left behind as your professor's talking about this is medial for this, this is lateral for this, this is proximal, this is distal, superior, inferior, blah, 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 blah. You will be left behind. There is an old expression when you study foreign languages that you actually understand the foreign language when you dream in that language. What I mean by this is as a beginning student, as the professor starts to talk about inferior and superior and medial and lateral, you will have to translate in your head. You'll be going, okay. You need to be able to define the word by saying the word. And what I mean by that is when I say superior, you don't think about what it means. You just know that it's superior. It just comes naturally, okay? So understand these terms, get them down, use them in your everyday talk. And um, besides losing some friends, you'll actually know what the words mean. So let's begin, enough rambling. Now let's actually talk about the terms. The directional terms are as follows. Superior cephalic, inferior caudal, anterior ventral, posterior dorsal, medial, lateral, intermediate, ipsilateral, contralateral, proximal, distal, superficial, and deep. Let's begin talking about top and bottom. If I said that I was superior to you, what does that mean besides being a real big jerk? It means that I think I am above. I am over you plebs. I am something apart. Well, in the human body, superior means over, above, going towards the top. That's what superior means in the world of the human body. If I said I felt inferior, I'm just no good. <laughs> it means that I feel under, below. Well, in the world of human anatomy, inferior means towards the feet, going down, going downwards, okay? So here's my first quiz question to you. The nose, walk is what? Is it superior or inferior? We'll wait a second. Okay, seconds over. If you said superior, you're not wrong. 
If you said inferior, you're not wrong. If you said, I can't tell because I need at least two points of references, then ding, 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 you're right. That's right, you need at least two points of references. The nose is superior, inferior to what? So if I said the nose is what to the chin, okay, the nose is what to the chin, you would say superior. I'm not gonna go any further up because I don't wanna, you know, <laughs> break, <laughs> anyway, but, but I'm bump. You get the idea. The nose is superior to the chin. The chin is inferior to the nose. We need two points of references. The nose is inferior to the forehead or the glabella. You'll learn about that in the skeletal system. The nose is inferior to the glabella. It is uh, the glabella, which is a little bump right here, is superior to the nose. So we need points of reference on this. We also have the two other words, which were cephalic and caudal. Cephalic and caudal are typically used more in the quadruped world as well as the embryology world. It basically means the same thing. Cephalic means going towards the head, while caudal means going towards the feet. By the way, $10 word for you, cephalgia. Cephalgia is a $20, $10 word for headache. So if you're in class and you want to be excused from class, you just say, teacher, teacher, I have a cephalgia. And they'll go, oh no, Johnny, go see the nurse. And you'll get out of class. Anyways, but superior going up towards the top, inferior going down towards the feet. Cephalic going towards the head, caudal going towards the rump, going towards the posterior, going towards the butt, going down, okay? The next two are front and back. We have a front and we have a back. We have anterior and posterior. Anterior is going towards the front, while posterior is going towards the back. We also have two other terms for this, and that is ventral and dorsal. Anyone who's a fan of Shark Week out there, you understand what dorsal is because you've heard about the dorsal fin. Where on the shark is the dorsal fin? It's on their back, right? The dorsal fin is on the back of the shark. Ventral is in the front. So, quick recap. Superior, inferior, anterior, posterior. Again, with the dorsal and the ventral, those are typically used in the four-legged world as well as the world of embryology, the study of babies and how babies are made. The next one is going in and going out. Imagine for a second that you can be cut into an equal left and a right side. Of course, that would probably not be too good for your health, but imagine for a second that you could. You have what we call a midline. This midline goes right down the middle of the body. Things going towards this middle area, middle begins with an M, and so does medial. Medial goes towards this midline. It goes towards the middle. Well, if we have something that goes towards the middle, then we have to have something that goes away from the middle, and that is lateral. And I just realized that if you're watching this video without any sound, it looks like I'm doing a little dance. Medial is going towards the middle, and lateral is going away from the middle. Intermediate is in between. It is in between two structures. So for example, the elbow is intermediate to the forearm and the arm. And yes, by the way, there is a difference. This is your forearm, this is your arm. This is intermediate to both. The next one is close and far. Before we talk about this, imagine for a second a developing fetus. We begin by half of a cell. They come together and amazing things happen. As the baby is being formed, how does this work? Do the arms form off to the side and join the body? Or does the body sprout the arms and they grow out? Well, the body sprouts the arms and it sprouts the legs and they grow out from the core of the body. This is the concept with proximal and distal. Proximal means towards the point of origin. It means towards where it came from. Distal distance, distal distance is 
going away from the point of origin. So, for example, using this arm again, the arm of the forearm, this would be proximal to the arm, going back towards the point of origin, while going this way would be distal. So, the arm is proximal to the forearm, while the forearm is distal to the arm. Continuing together and apart. Again, remember our midline. If I have a mark here and a mark here on the same side of the body, they are considered ipsilateral, ipsi same. Ipsilateral means on the same side of the body. If I had a mark here and here, they're on the opposite side of the body. They are contralateral. Contra, contrary, conflict, opposite sides. So, ipsilateral, same side, contralateral, opposite sides. Our last two are superficial and deep. If you get a lesion, which is a $20 word for boo-boo, okay? If you have a lesion and it is superficial, we're talking about a paper cut. If you have a lesion that is deep, we're talking about stitches. Superficial is towards the surface, while deep is deep in. Again, a superficial cut, a superficial lesion, is a paper cut, while a deep lesion, a deep cut, is stitches. So, let's go through these again very quickly, just to recap. Going up, going towards the top, going towards the head, superior, going down is inferior, going towards the middle is medial, going out is lateral, going away from the point of origin is distal, going back towards the point of origin is proximal. Let me pause there for a second. The arm. Is the arm superior or inferior to the forearm? Well, it is superior to the forearm, but a more correct way of saying that would be it's proximal to the forearm. Moving on. So, superior, inferior, medial, lateral, proximal, distal, we did medial lateral, right? We also have intermediate between the two structures, ipsilateral, contralateral, superficial, ow, little paper cut, deep, ow, gotta go get stitches, boom. Those are the directional terms. Again, be sure to have these down. Be sure to be able to do something like that very quickly. If you have to think about what the term means, you really need to use it a lot more in your everyday language so you know that superior is superior and not going towards the head. You just have the words. We're going to continue. We're almost done with our introduction to human anatomy. Hang in there.